Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. Before we dive into some OBJ news and a full preview of the Week 2 matchup against the Texans, I want to get your score predictions. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Hopefully you got the Browns by a million because I've got them winning by a pretty big sum right here. Give me... Browns 37, Texans 20, I think they cover. I think they pour it on to win their first game of the 2021 season. But let me know what your score predictions are in the comments. Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. We've got some breaking news coming at you guys as Odell Beckham Jr. is a no-go for week two. Missed week one after being ruled out during warm-ups in Kansas City. And middle of the week, Kevin Stefanski, head coach, comes out and says, OBJ is a no-go for week two. And here's what I got to say about this. With Houston coming to town, a team no one's expecting to do anything this season, why push it, okay? I mean, that's always kind of a rule of thumb. If you're not 100%, usually you shouldn't play anyway. But when you're playing some tough-notch opponents like the Baltimore Ravens or the Steelers this season, that's a different cause for concern. But with Houston, what bother? So Adam Schefter came out with the news. No go for OBJ. A little interesting that Kevin Stefanski decides to just let it be known in the middle of the week. You know why? It doesn't wait until Sunday to see if OBJ can get up to game speed. Nope, shuts it down in the middle of the week on Wednesday as opposed to, like last week, on Sunday morning. I think it's a balance of smart and cautious from the Browns, okay? One, I like the idea, actually, of saying this on Wednesday. Get it out of the way. Don't let it be a distraction. Don't let it be the headline on Sunday. Let your team focus on this. So here's when OBJ maybe could return. I'm just going to give you the schedule here of the games coming up after week two. So, Bears week three, a really bad secondary in Chicago. I don't even think the Browns would need OBJ for that one, but if he's healthy, he plays. That's always my mindset. Vikings, Chargers, now we're approaching close to a full year because week seven is that mark against the Broncos on Thursday Night Football for that 12-month calendar year since OBJ went down with a torn ACL. So... Did not play against the Chiefs. It's been a little bit worrisome because I thought going into week one, he would be a go. All the signs in preseason and training camp showed great progression. And it's difficult to come back from an ACL tear 10 months afterwards. But Odell Beckham, he's just that kind of athlete and he can pull it off. So what's your panic level over OBJ not playing in week two? Scale it for me. One to ten. One, not an issue. Won't lose a wink of sleep over this. 10, I'm breaking dishes right now. For me, I'm probably at a 4. I was at a 2 earlier, only because all signs were looking good in the preseason. This is just a little more confusing now because all out of nowhere, maybe not out of nowhere, but from the fans and media perspective, it kind of seems like that to miss the first two weeks. Browns Texans week two coming up here. Let's give you the full preview of this one. Browns 12 and a half favorites over and under. Uh, over unders at 48. 1 p.m. kickoff at First Energy Stadium for the first home opener uh, for the home opener of the 2021 NFL season. And so let's look at Baker Mayfield, the man, the myth, and the center of the spotlight here. 15 and 8 at home in his career. So Pretty good putting up a good show in front of the hometown fans. Here's my take on this. Stay aggressive on early downs, okay? Looking at my notes right here from that week one matchup against the Chiefs, 172 yards for Baker Mayfield on first down, 71 yards on second down. Kevin Stefanski showed a lot of guts in the play calling in week one. Take that into week two. Don't stop. Don't put, take your foot off the gas. Keep it going. 321 yards, by far the most he's ever thrown in his first in a first game of the season. He's really putting up great numbers to start. It's only week one, but why not overreact a little bit? Because there's too many haters out there on Baker, and he's a top 10 quarterback. He's a play action and non-play action kind of guy because down the stretch of 2020, they went to the play action a ton, and it worked a ton. But defenses can figure you out. If you're not evolving, if you're not changing, you're going backwards in the NFL. All right, look at some more notes here. On non-play action last week against the Chiefs, 14 for 21, 
186 yards. I love seeing that numbers because that makes the defense unpredictable, okay? That makes the offense unpredictable. Defense has to stay on their toes. They can't expect a run or a pass. They've got to be ready for both. So, two and a half touchdowns for Baker Mayfield this week. Over or under? Type O for over or U for under. Has zero in week one. Slap in the over on this one. He's due for a handful of TD tosses. Give me the over for two and a half in week two. Nick Chubb was one of the bright spots in week one. Had those two big touchdown runs. Costly fumble down the stretch, though, in the second half. That kind of uh, started a swing of momentum in Kansas City's favor. But he is not one to start the season slow. Check out the first four games for Nick Chubb in his career. Going from 2018 to now, 962 yards, averages 6 yards a carry, 12 touchdowns, 74 yards a game. Chubb, does, he's not the kind of player that needs a little time to you know rev up his engines. He gets going early, and that's not what defenses want to see because they're still a little winded as they're getting back into football shape. But I'm excited for Nick Chubb. A lot of optimism about this running game. And that's why they gave him that big contract extension back in August. Now, the wide receiver room here. I want to give you a little look at what it looks like without OBJ. Everyone slots up below. Jarvis Landry. Didn't know he could run so much. I mean, we always knew that was part of his game. He can run, throw, and pass. But he was really a very dynamic player in week one. Just drinking a little bit out of the fountain of youth on the sideline. Check out Anthony Schwartz over there, wide receiver four. He was someone that I was very optimistic about going into the season. Missed all of preseason with hamstring injuries, but he was really fun in week one. It's stretching the field out, adding another element to this offense. Anthony Schwartz and Baker Mayfield could hook up for a couple deep balls against the Texans who... Let's face it, don't have this sexy defense. There's just not a lot to write home about for Houston, which is why pretty much everyone wrote them off in the, in the beginning of the season. But they beat up on Jacksonville. But who is it? Biggest threat to the Texans this week from this Cleveland offense. Nick Chubb's a great guess, all right? Um, I'm fine with anyone on the wide receiver room. I'm going to go with Anthony Schwartz, though. Look for a building block from week one to week two. Finally punch it into the end zone. Browns fans, we got you guys hooked up over at BetUS. Here's the deal, yo. Make some money on Cleveland this season. Good teams win, great teams cover. And that's what they've been doing so far. So check out the link down below, chatsports.com slash bet. Plug in the promo code BROWNS125. BetUS, they got you covered with a 125% deposit bonus. And you know who else is covering this week? I got the Browns covering. 12 and a half looks like a huge number. But once kickoff comes and once this offense starts moving up and down the field, it won't be an issue. I'm also really enticed by that over-under at 48 we saw what the Browns' offense could do in week one, putting up 29 points. Texans' offense didn't look too half bad in week one against the Jags. I'm going to just put a little fire underneath that over for me. Now, defensively for the Browns, we gaslighted the offense a little bit. Defense, takeaways, 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 okay? Denzel Ward preached that, talking to the media in practice this week because they're so accustomed to it after last season. This is a Cleveland defense that's coming off a season where they posted 12 takeaways through the first five games. Didn't get any in week one against Kansas City. They're going to snap back into form against the Texans. That poses an offense fo formed of Terod Taylor. We'll talk about him later on. But a little shakeup, though, on the depth chart. Malik McDowell, the former second-round pick from the Seahawks, has moved all the way up to a starting role on the interior defensive line. Major props to him. If any time in life you can bounce back and work your way up to whatever top of the field you are in, kudos to you. Looked good against the Chiefs. Played nearly 70% of the snaps. Andrew Billings was supposed to be the starter, and then quickly he just got demoted. He fell behind uh, McDowell, who suits up and slots up to a starting role on the defensive line. Now, Here's the Texans offense they'll be going up against. 
Familiar face in Terod Taylor, former starting quarterback for the Browns back in 2018. He's bounced around a little bit since then. Mark Ingram, a journeyman. And then Brandon Cooks, I think, is one of the most slept-on wide receivers. He consistently puts up 1,000 yards a season despite living out of a suitcase and traveling from city to city. Chris Conley comes over. I like this Texans offense. I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Terod Taylor is a pretty good quarterback in the NFL when he gets a chance to start from the get-go and doesn't have a first-round rookie breathing down his neck like Baker Mayfield and Justin Herbert. I think he's a very efficient and a game-manager kind of quarterback, which isn't bad for someone who's been in the league for over a decade at this point. So, who are you watching out for? Biggest threat to the Browns this week from Houston. Me, personally, I think it's Brandon Cooks. Again, I don't think he is appreciated enough in the NFL. He's sneaky good, and this Browns secondary didn't have a good week, let's face it, against the Chiefs, which, granted, has names like Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill Patrick Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey, but still... You want to have a good bounce back game, so don't let Brandon Cooks be an overlooked kind of matchup. Browns fans get the best news and rumors, content, everything throughout the entire season by subscribing to the Cleveland Browns Report. Take your little cursor, go over to subscribe, change it from red to gray so you can get more Browns content all season long because here's the deal. Too many of the national media power rankings are docking the Browns for covering a four point, uh, covering in a four-point loss at Kansas City. I'm not buying it, CBS, with this 12th overall power ranking. So subscribe right now so you can get actual Browns content that reflects where they are in the NFL, which is one of the top teams in the NFL. In other Browns news, yeah, familiar face here, Josh Gordon. Recent, recently completed his NFL Monitor treatment program as he continues to go through rehabilitation and work through off-the-field issues and substance abuse problems. He applied for reinstatement. It looks like the commish will approve this. That's what all the signs are indicating. And if so, he's a free, free agent immediately, can sign wherever he'd like, familiar face in Cleveland, should the Browns bring Josh Gordon in for just a workout? Let's start there before maybe jumping to signing, in my opinion. Type Y for yes or N for no. I'm a little torn because, one, you know what he's capable of when he's at his top level. But also, do you really need a distraction? I, it's been a while since that huge season for Cleveland back in 2013, 2012. I don't know. I, I don't hate the idea of doing your homework and bringing him in. So I, I'm going to go with no. Yeah, I'm going to stop dilly-dallying. N for no. Plenty of talent in this wide receiver room for Cleveland. Let someone else take a crack at him. Some injury news here after the week one matchup, which the Browns came out relatively healthy by some standards compared to other NFL teams who lost players for the whole season. Biggest news, Jedrick Wills, the second-year left tackle, currently listed as day-to-day, -day, suffered an ankle injury in that second quarter on the Jarvis Landry run into the end zone, just got rolled up on. But here's the deal. The Browns have so much depth and talent at the offensive line, a handful of their backups would absolutely start on other NFL teams. And how do I know that? Because Baker had an average of over three seconds to throw against the Chiefs. That was the most in the NFL, the highest. And they lost their starting left tackle in the second quarter. Chris Hubbard, a veteran, he can do it all. He can be a versatile player. So personally, don't push it. This Texans, off, this Texans defensive line and pass rush is not very scary. If he's not 100%, even 90%, I'm sitting him. Let him get healthy. You don't want to push an ankle injury, especially with Wills, who's got a bit of history going back to the final game of the 2020 season against the Chiefs.